I'm here today to emphasize the importance of voice and safeguarding our voice, which is supposed to be our identity. Now, I want you all to listen to a few samples as it is being played. Social distance, mask, sanitizer, and sanitizer. This is the one thing that we have to do. We have to do a job. 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 Okay, you heard two samples. Uh, can you tell me uh, if you could notice anything in the voices? that we played now. Obviously, you could guess whether it was a man or a woman, the biological sex of the individual, probable age. Of course, language was not very familiar, so content may not be understandable. But then, uh, you could recognize whether it was a person and whether it was a man or a woman. Now, how do we do this? We tend to depend on our years and our ears will perceive certain characteristics and these characteristics are produced by the internal organs or our biological organs. This is supposed to be the human mechanism and this is how every time I speak the air from the lungs will be released up. So there is something called as the voice box or the larynx as we technically call and then there are air filled chambers in the throat, mouth, nose and face. Yes, face you heard me right because we are aware of the sinuses that are present in the face. Most of us get affected with sinusitis. That is when the air filled chambers in the face can get accumulated with the mucus and cause various problems. So these sinuses are supposed to help us along with the chambers in the throat, mouth, nose to give us that quality of voice which is supposed to be our personal identity. So this is very important to us as human beings and there is a delicate organ called the voice box, a beautiful organ inside the human larynx which is supposed to be altered, changing its activity, action with the course of aging and various other factors that influence it over the period of time. Now all of these will be helping us to produce our sound or our voice which gives us our identity. Now when do you think this voice begins? Any idea? It begins at birth. Yes, it begins at birth with the birth cry. Birth cry is very very important or crucial because it is heralding to the world the new life, the sustenance of energy, life, well-being, health of a baby. If the sound is not clear, if the sound is not heard, then it indicates the survival of the baby or the newborn is doubtful. So in that condition, voice begins with birth and it goes on refining. The next stage that we tend to notice is supposed to be the infancy stage wherein the baby experiments with its structures and then tries producing lot of cries and these cries are very very soothing pleasant pleasing to the parents because it can indicate the biological requirement or needs of the baby like the cry for pleasure or the cry for discomfort cry for hunger cry for pain now all of these are done as an experimentation by the baby in the infancy stage then comes the babyhood stage. The babyhood is characterized by first word wherein the baby begins to say Amma or Appa and the parents are thrilled, thrilled beyond limit. The encouragement, the reinforcement that the baby gets will strengthen the responses of the baby to voice out more such words. Then comes the childhood. The childhood is the stage where the baby experiments listening to the adults in its vicinity, be it parents, grandparents, neighbors, friends and then these words or these voices will become stronger, steadier and confidently produced. Then comes childhood where the child is exposed to the culture, language, various words, 
sentences, structures, etc. And the baby is going to master the language. The important stage that all of us have to keep in mind is supposed to be between 12 and 14 or 16 years of age called the puberty. So this is the stage that all of us have gone through and here there is sudden spurt of growth that happens in all the parts of the body especially the skeleton mechanism and this is supposed to be very very imperative or necessary for us to step into adulthood. So this is going to give us very very crucial evidences that the changes that are happening are as per nature's will. So the girl will go into the stage of womanhood, a boy is going to transit into the manhood stage and the drop in voice pitch will be very evident or clear in case of boys when compared to girls. So this is necessary and a very crucial stage that all of us have to remember. Adulthood is supposed to be the most important stage where we can expect some amount of saturation in voice but not too much of variations except for the emotional upheavals it can be, environmental factors, health issues, work complications, all of this can try as much as possible to affect our voice but these can be temporary changes and the changes can resolve if there are no inherent serious anatomical issues. Then comes the old age, most of us are very shy, timid, scared of accepting aging but then we have to be very very thankful and blessed. Only few of us can live to experience all these changes. This is the stage of phase which will tell us that the health or the healing will not happen as readily as we think it should. So that is the major drawback and here there can be a lot of changes in pitch, loudness and quality of the voice and these have to be accepted and then improvised whenever possible. Now the biological organs when what we discussed gives us lot of uh, physical features or characteristics which can be heard and this is something very very important. I can be recognized by my pitch, loudness and more crucially about the quality. The pitch can be traced like this, the loudness can be traced like this and all of us will be able to hear the pitch of the person and decide whether it is male, female, father, mother, child, etc. And if these things are done in a technical manner, making use of instruments or softwares designed by people like you, experts in the field, we would be calling it as the assessment by the professional or experts or technical people. Now this is going to help us in deciding normalcy of the voice or abnormalcy of the voice. So this is again important and I am a speech language pathologist and audiologist mainly focusing on voice because I tend to recognize more uh, lucrative options working with voice and its importance. It can be in children, it can be in adults or geriatrics or aged individuals. Now there are professions uh, which will be making up uh, use of voice for personal gains or professional gains or living a livelihood. So such people who depend on voice for their livelihood or personal professional gains will be termed as professional voice users, singers, actors, teachers, preachers, politicians will all be part of this. For some professions the fine nurses control technicality, uh, versatility in the sound production organ will become very very essential and such people will be termed as elite professional voice users. Singers, actors get listed under them. There are some professions which require voice to be heard loud enough and it has to be present throughout the day, especially teachers because the students depend on hearing the voice of the teachers or the professors or lecturers and then they have to be heard even to the last row student. So in that condition the main requirement is a voice that is heard continuously, constantly. There are other professions like hawkers, vendors, etc. wherein they are marketing their products and they want to gain or have an edge over the other person and see that their products are sold. 
Now even they are using the voice for professional purposes, but then they are not worried about their pitch, loudness or quality. They shout or scream endlessly marketing their products. Now that is going to be harmful or damaging to the organs or the structures. When these testings are done in a very uh, scientific manner using lot of evidences, protocols, etc., then it will be termed of as technical assessment and when such assessments are done to help the honorable judiciary or the honorable legal vocation, it can be called as professional forensic speaker analysis or voice analysis. Here we tend to judge or hear, measure the pitch, loudness, quality and other characteristics of voice and try to identify the person. And most of the time we tend to have another sample for reference and make comparisons and judgments are made as to whether they belong to the same person or not. This entire profession will be called as forensic speaker or voice identification or verification. When we make comparisons, it is verifications. Just by listening to the sound of the person, we name the person, then it will be identification. Voice can also be used by certain individuals for recreational purposes like artists who are into mimicking. They may mimic sounds of the nature or they may mimic animal sounds or even use it to imitate others. Now do you think imitation is possible? Have you all attempted? I think so, yes. But then imitation or impersonation if it is done for monetary gains without the knowledge of another person, then it is going to become a problem, a technical legal issue. So most of the time people can imitate the pitch, the loudness or the timing aspects and certain uh, it can be the mannerisms that the person uses like hey, ho, ha, such words that the person commonly uses. Now these things can be imitated or mastered or aped, but then there are finer aspects of voice which cannot be imitated or which cannot be mimicked completely totally. So in that condition, we tend to say that voice is supposed to be unique, individualistic and it can be a biomarker for you or for me, for us to maintain our individual identities. When voice is used extensively continuously long phone chats, I am sure all of you do that, endlessly on phone or loud talking like I am here on stage, teaching would require that too or it could be singing continuously for a span of 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, teaching for extended periods of time because most of the teachers can have classes for about 6 hours in a day or 7 hours or 8 hours and they may be in the profession for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years like that or when we tend to use voice uh, when we are not well. For example, you have a cough, cold, infection, etc. That time too, your voice can go lot of changes, wear and tear. Throat clearing, <clears throat> people tend to do this a lot in order to clear their throat. Now that is supposed to be a very bad habit wherein the delicate, beautiful mechanism of vocal folds will be subjected to rough collision and that can be very, very detrimental. Now, these habits are supposed to be the wrong habits or the unhygienic habits as we call for voice maintenance. So your voice can undergo a lot of problems very frequently if you are in the habit of doing any of these. So we tend to give guidelines, tips or approaches or certain crucial tips in order to see that such behaviors are stopped and they inculcate healthy habits or behaviors and we term them as, as speech language pathologists, as vocal hygiene measures. And vocal hygiene can be individualized, tailor-made to, uh, to suit different professional voice user groups and that will be a completely different subject for discussion. And so let's all make up our minds that we are not going to harm our voice by excess shouting, screaming, talking unnecessarily, uh, trying to have the last say in majority of the conversations that we do, 
so that by doing all that we will be safeguarding our voice and trying to see that it lasts for as long as we are living so beautiful